Unam and I have done classes in, in, um, in real life, <laughs> in person. We like to go over all the instructions first, so it, it feels a little like we're not getting there yet, but it, it really helps. You can see how the whole process is going to lay out, and then we'll get into the actual sewing. So we're just going to go through it. Yeah, so first we're just going to go over what supplies we need. And then basically the first step is to just cut a big piece of fabric. Um, we've experimented with some different sizes. Um, so we can talk about what the different sizes might be. And then you, if you've done any sewing before, you know that usually you're going to fold the wrong sides, uh, sorry, the right sides together. So the wrong sides are on the outside. So we're basically going to sew a big long um, tube with the right sides together. And we're just going to sew along the top. And then, um, oh yeah, that, so that's, uh, you fold it in half and then you sew along the top. Okay, and then, um, and you can, we're doing hand sewing today just because we're not assuming everyone has, do we, do you guys have a sewing machine? Yeah. No. Okay, yeah, hand, it's, it goes super quick, hand sewing. And then the nice thing is you can do that when you're, you know, sitting outside, listen to a podcast, Netflix, whatever, you can make a bazillion scrunchies. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, you sew on it, and then, what's that? I said, that's my plan. <laughs> <laughs> then you can wear them all on your wrist. I, I wear them all the time. I'm, yes. so, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, okay, and then you, this is like a common thing if you sew when you're turning things inside out. That's what the pin is for. Um, you're going to take the safety pin and pin it to one edge, not all the way through both sides, just one edge, and then you're going to loop it back through, and that'll become a lot more clear once we get there. That's to turn it right side out. And then you're going to unpin and use your safety pin again and attach it to your elastic and you're going to um, lace it back through. And the elastic, um, so I have this, this is like a produce, you know, for around celery or broccoli or whatever, but you can also use these big office, I call them office rubber bands, I don't know what they're called, these kind of yellow ones, but you're going to want to cut them because it needs to go through. You can also use just like um, can you guys see this elastic? Maybe you have some leftover from making masks. This is like quarter inch. This is a little wider, but um, so we're gonna thread that through and it'll be shorter than your, your big long piece of fabric. Then you tie them together, that's the next step. And then you've got, you've got a donut that's got a big gap in it. And then we're gonna slip stitch. You can see the third little row, slip stitch the fabric together so it doesn't come out. And that's, um, well, somewhere I had an example. I don't know where my scrunchie went, but it's like holding the two edges together. And then the last step is rocking your scrunchie, like Molly's already doing. I'm rocking it. <laughs> um, I can show a couple of examples. So I'm still kind of working on prototypes, actually. But this is the first one I made. I just used a regular hair tie that I already had, and I snipped it in half. Um, it is pretty thin like it's not very wide on the fabric and it doesn't stretch very far because I only did about 10 inches of fabric. Um, the next one I used an office rubber band and it gets really big which is awesome and I used a much longer strip of fabric. I think I did I think I did 19 inches um, but it's still not very wide so you don't see because this actually has sharks on it, and you definitely want uh -oh. to see the sharks. <laughs> and then the third one, I made one that's like super wide, which I really like the way that looks. Um, but I think I only did it about like 16 inches, and it's like not quite, doesn't stretch out all the way. But it kind of depends on how you wear it. So Molly, like yours, do you have a hair tie on underneath it? No, it's just okay. scrunchy. But you have it wrapped a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I would say like it's kind of up to you to prototype, but um, you definitely want your strip of fabric to be long. I would say the 22 inches is good. Yeah, for maximum scrunch. Yes, exactly. And this, oh, this, so this I, I found mine. This is like Emma, I made. The, so the three and a half that we recommend was is this size. So that's like maybe for a small ponytail or, you know, if you just want it at the end of a braid or something. I don't know how people wear their scrunchies, but that's, you know, <laughs> recommendations. And then I made, I did, this one's seven inches, so I doubled it. It's kind of like Emma's. And this is Love really, that. I'll just put it on So it's, it's just really wild. big, which would 
you know, be nice in your hair so you can see all the different colors. Yeah. I'm going to do one in between today, but that kind of gives you an idea. So this was three and a half and this was seven. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try five. I did the piece that I'm doing today is this wild fabric. Um, and I, I did five inches. So it'll be kind of, I was is there any it, like type of fabric that you recommend like well, if, for this or can you use it? If you, if you hashtag scrunchies on Instagram, like it is insane. I, I just thought I'd find a few pictures, but um, Federica, she's, she's um, here helping me and she showed me a <laughs> uh, hashtag. There are so many different types. So you could do any, any fabric. You could do velour, you could do metallic, but to start with, I would start with cotton just because it's easier to sew. You know, um, you can do silk. That's what I'm doing, but it's slippery. The metallic tends to be a little slippery and like lots of raw edges. So to start with cotton and cotton's good because if you have like a button up shirt or sheet, exactly, you know. And the fun thing about cotton too, if you get really creative and you have like a white sheet and Sharpies, you could like draw pictures all over it. And that could oh, be- yeah. what I was Molly thinking was to like tie dye them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you could yeah. do all sorts of wild stuff. Possibilities are limitless. So do you both have a piece already? I haven't moment. cut mine yet. I just have a pillowcase. Okay. So, go and Karen, ahead. are you just going to sew later? I'm going to sew later. Okay. Yeah, I've got my I've got my fabric, but I, I'm just going to sew later. Okay, and so, Federica's going to sew along with us. This is Federica. Hello. <laughs> um, I'm just going to go briefly over some of the um, materials. I was going to say ingredients. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so the fabric. You need a nice big piece, um, any kind of elastic like we talked about. I'm just using uh, store-bought pieces of elastic, but. Yeah, would you say a rubber band is better than like, I have hair ties, but I also have rubber bands. Should I go get a rubber band? Um, the rubber bands just might be longer. So you can make a bigger scrunchie, like you could wrap it around more or like you have pretty thick hair, so you might want that what trying to say <laughs> and also emma you were saying too that the rubber bands that are made for hair once you cut them and then tie them they they don't have a lot of give that's right? true yeah and they get a lot shorter that makes sense yeah i don't know where i got this but this one has been really helpful it's like an yeah, extra long huge yeah <laughs> um and then just any basic thread and it doesn't really matter what color um for the most part um, you're probably not going to see it very much. But if you have matching your fabric, that's always good. Um, the safety pin, like we mentioned, um, I'm going to use pins, but those are kind of optional. This isn't going to be like super exact, so it's you'll be able to um, make some make some mistakes or like not have it pinned exactly, and that's fine. And then just a sewing needle, some scissors. If you have a ruler, that's good um, to measure out your fabric, but you can kind of guesstimate as well. And if you have a pen nearby, that's helpful for marking the fabric where you're going to cut it. So yeah, that's all. So we can go ahead and cut our fabrics. The hard part is getting a long enough piece. So I actually didn't I have to measure this and see if it goes. And like we said, it doesn't have to go out exactly to 22. Um, but it's nice to have the extra scrunch to it. So just, I wonder if I can, oh, look at that. Oh, nice. So you can just look at that. My ruler only goes up to eight. So I'm gonna have to do. Eight, 16, 22. All and right. That's your, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, my fabric's like 24, so I think I'm just going to do 24. The extra scrunch. And if you are marking it, um, you'd want to do that on the back side of the fabric so that it doesn't show up on your finished piece. And I'm gonna do um, another five wide. I really like 
So that was um, this one was five inches wide. Yeah, so as you're cutting the width, just as a reminder, that what Emma's showing us is five. This is the recommended from the um, thing three and a half. And then this one's seven. And to remember so, is that we're gonna be folding that fabric in half. So if you do five, it's really gonna be um, two and a half. This one actually came out to two with the seam. So it's not actually gonna be, um, five like from the rubber band out. It's just going to be half of that. So here is where like I'm not super pre precise about it. I don't even have like perfectly straight edges because this is just scrap from another project. Um, but it definitely doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to going to mic mark um, five inches a couple spots down. But again, like if you don't have a ruler, you can just kind of guesstimate. Another thing you can do sometimes with these cotton fabrics is if you just, um, I'll do it on a separate piece, but if you make a little cut with your scissor and then you can actually just tear it. Wow. If you tear, make sure the other side is torn too though, because otherwise it won't be straight. Yeah, sometimes it curls up a little bit. But if you don't have a ruler, that's kind of like a basic little trick you can try. I'm going to go hunt for other rubber bands, but I'll be back. Okay. Emma, do you know what I mean about straight? Like if you had one edge was cut and one edge was torn, then you could potentially have uneven. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't always um, tear completely parallel. Right. But, but if you tear both sides or tear off a tiny piece first, then you can use that as your edge. Oh, Maybe yeah. Better. Yeah, exactly. All right, I know I lost my, where was I? Where was I even measuring? <laughs> there we are. Oh yeah, I forgot you already had your strip cut, Helen. The great thing about this project too is that it's very forgiving. It's a good um, first or early sewing project because it's all just gonna be bunched up in your hair. <laughs> so no one can really look at it super closely. I'm just um, connecting some of the markings that I made so that I can get a line to cut on. Did you find any other ones, Molly? I found this one, which is just like... Oh yeah, I think that'll be perfect. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and cut. You can also, if you guys have those quilting um, mats and um, clear oh, a rotary cutter. Yeah, rotary cutter, exactly. That works too. Yeah, I have zero sewing tools. All you need is scissors and fabric. Yeah, so I figured. Um... I'll take it or leave it. <laughs> That's where I get my fabric. I was like, we have so many cool fabrics in the MMA, like, education basement, so, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, I wish I could go. Oh, I've seen them down in the, where the fish were, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's the really fish. fun. I, I eyeballed them. <laughs> nice. They're very thematic. You could be, like, Ms. Frizzle at, um, <laughs> at camp. Yeah, maybe I should give you this shark scrunchie. Ooh. <laughs> They are like once you make one they whip up so easily I'm kind of like wow I'm just gonna make like a scrunchie for all of my friends okay I, know, I was telling I was telling my friend who's a, a man with long hair like he wanted to learn to make them and I was saying yeah for all of your female relatives and then I I realized like 
I mean, guys, you know, you can, guys will grow scrunchies too. The right guy. <laughs> scrunchies are gender neutral. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so next I'm going to fold the fabric in half. So this is the correct side that's going to be um, the final product. So I'm going to fold the correct side to the correct side. And then um, if you have pins, this is where you could pin it. If you have an iron, you could also iron it. That helps keep it um, folded at the same place. And I don't I have extra needles. Could I use them as pins? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Or even like a paper clip or like a binder clip. But you don't even need that many. It's just kind of to keep a reference of where the edges touch. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut a length of thread. It doesn't have to be long enough to get through the whole piece since this is a pretty long piece of fabric. Um, you can always tie a knot in the middle and start again. And one sewing trick that I sometimes do, which I have done for these scrunchies, especially with hand sewing when I'm nervous about the seams ripping, because with the scrunchie, you're going to be stretching it a lot. So I actually put my threads together, and I do with a needle in the middle, and I do like a double strand. Callan, do you do, ever do a double strand? I always do a double strand because it, it, oh, okay. it just comes out otherwise. Yeah. And that way, like, it's less likely to break, too, when you're stretching it. And then it's easier when you're all done to tie a knot, too. And then um, I have this technique for doing a knot. I learned this from my mom. But you wrap the thread around your finger, just, like, so it overlaps. And then you roll it with your other finger until it comes off. Oops. And then it's kind of like this tangled mess. And when you just pull on it, it's so tangled, it just knots itself. Hopefully you guys can see that OK. Um, and then I'm just going to start sewing. So I start just at the very end. You don't want to be too close to the edge. Um, and we're going to seam that edge anyway, so it's OK if you're not all the way at the end. And then I just go, you know, back, back in just a tiny bit away from that first stitch. And you, um, Emma, did you say already you want like about a quarter to half inch seam allowance? Oh, yeah. So the, the seam allowance, yeah. um, you guys probably know, but it's between the edge here and where you're doing the stitches. So you don't want your stitches to be too close to the edge or they'll fall out. Um, I usually do pretty tiny, um, but I'm trying to get my ruler in here. About a quarter inch is good, but you could do half inch as well if you're concerned about the stitches falling out. And that's another thing that if you want, you can um, use your ruler and go along and kind of make markings and connect them with the ruler, just to remind yourself. And then like- Not to go too far. Yeah. Because I find with hand sewing, a lot of times I just, especially if you just like get really into it, your um, your stitches kind of can go up and down. So if you keep a line to follow, that's helpful. And then, you know, there's not really any um, 
specific rule on how far away the stitches should be. I like to do mine pretty close so that I know that it's holding it secure. And sometimes if they're too far apart and you like tug on the string, it bunches up. So you want to be careful it doesn't do that. You have really small stitches, Emma. That's impressive. Thank you. It's also like hand sewing is just like kind of therapeutic sometimes. So I like to do just nice and tiny. I think the fact that you're going in and out makes them smaller too. I tend to just kind of bunch it on and then pull them. Oh yeah, that's true. That's like kind of another um, style you can do is like do a bunch of stitches at once. That's what I usually do. But you have to be really careful to just get a little bit. And then pull. Pull them all through at once. Oops. That kind of helps it go a little faster too. Emma, I, lo I really love your fabric. <laughs> Thank you. I gotta say. I got this big box of fabric donated to me. Um, and it had all these great patterns in it. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. So there are some shark masks out there in the world now. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. <laughs> I saw a mask the other day with a big um, smile on the front yeah. of it. Which oh, I love that. Really awesome. Because I feel like you have to smile really hard when you have a mask on so people can really see your eyes and know. You like, know what I was thinking of like. Um, people have made more clear ones. Oh, yeah, making clear ones for um, people that are hard of hearing so yeah. that they can lip read. So they can read. Yeah. Oh, that makes right. sense. That's nice. I imagine for kids that would be a lot less scary too. You I know? know. I'm so I'm so worried about that for the summer. Like if could we we're hoping to offer some sort of programming. And right now the mask that Jason wants everyone to have is like this crazy vent, like scary. And I'm like, I don't know if children are gonna wanna hang out with someone. Yeah. <laughs> See you in a little sister. Emma, do you do anything when you first start to like secure it or do you just have the knot? Just that knot. I make mine like pretty chunky. Yeah. Um, like some people will just like loop around, tie one knot in the string. And if you're going to do that, I'd recommend doing that a couple times so that your knot is like very sturdy. I'm going to step away for a few minutes, but I'll be right back. Okay. <clears throat> Kaylin, I was sorry to hear the Farm Fresh Feast was uh, canceled. Yeah. yeah it yeah. makes sense, but that was Is such that a fun last year. Yeah, it's mid-July, but it's just, we don't, I mean, it's probably like your summer camps. Like, you, you it's so far in advance, you don't really know. You know, they're not giving permits till July 1st, but maybe back to council and that is scheduling. Yeah, exactly. I think we're going to try to do something else. But I was thinking about, thank you, Molly. I was thinking about next year, how much fun it's going to be if we get to do it. Like, everyone will just be so Everyone's going to be like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Everything's going to happen. Yeah. I'm so much fun. Yeah. 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 We need some scrunchy sewing music. Yeah. Scrunchies are 80s or 70s? Very 80s. 80s. This is like my, I'm dating myself, but it's so funny to see them because this is, I grew up in Southern California and I used to go to Sherman Oaks Galleria. That's like where the Valley Girl thing started and we wore scrunchies oh, all the time. Yeah. Like, That's awesome. It's amazing. Yeah. Let me see if I can find some good. I know. I really feel like, and, and my mom says this all the time, like I feel like my hair was like made to exist in the 80s. <laughs> like it's so poofy and like 
Okay. Isn't that funny? My hair, my hair always wings, so I feel like my hair is stuck in the 70s, but it's, <laughs> yeah. you, you totally have 80s hair, especially how you're kind of rocking it to the side. Like, I yeah. feel like, get some leg warmers. But and it all. literally does that naturally. Like, I'll put it up in the middle, and it's so heavy that it just pulls to one yeah. side or the other. <laughs> Federica is saying 90s. She thinks, she thinks it's a 90s look. <laughs> so, I just came to a spot where I'm at, like, the end of my thread. So I'm just going to tie it off with a knot and then um, get a new piece of thread. So Emma, can you show how to um, tie off the knot? Because I was just um, showing Federica and I think it's useful, especially if people don't do a lot of hand sewing. Yeah. So I have my own technique. I don't know if it's conventional, but... Um, I just kind of make a little stitch, a very tiny stitch near the end. And before I pull all the way through, I go through that loop again with my needle. And that just kind of like secures that little stitch. And then I'll do that a couple times kind of over the same spot. That's exactly how I tie mine off. All right, good. So it's conventional or we're being unconventional together. <laughs> and then um, you don't want to cut it too close to the fabric. And since this is going to be the inside anyway, you can leave a tail of thread. Okay, I'm about halfway through. Oh, so you know what, Emma, did you say at the end to kind of fold it over? That's important. No, that you can see. <laughs> yeah, did you do that at the beginning too? I just did it on one side. We didn't do that. Oh, time. right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, so Molly, when you get to the end, um, can you show yours again, Callan? That looked really good. Yeah, I don't know if, can you see the difference? So do you sew it, do like, you sew it down? Fold it over. Like fold it I over and it sew right it down? There. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And if you if you if you Here. didn't do it, yeah, we did not, we forgot to do it on Federica's, but you can always just turn it. I'm gonna tell people to watch this recording just so they can watch me dance to Michael Jackson. <laughs> With my Ten seconds, sorry. Nice. Yeah, I love the big ones. All right, so to, to do this step, you pin, this is on the drawing, it's gonna be a little hard to see, but you don't wanna pin all the way through. So I don't, this is what I don't wanna do. I don't wanna pin through both sides, right? Cause then I can't turn it inside out. I just wanna catch one side and if you're doing a really thick scrunchie, you actually don't really need to do this, I discovered. But then you're going to turn it in on itself and push it through the tube and just kind of place it through. And Emma was saying the sewing was very therapeutic. This is continuing on that kind of just yeah. mindless. I'm going to give you this one I'm done. It's therapeutic and then the reward is like, whoa. Scrunchie. There's no better reward than that. Oh, so it was so funny because I've lost like a bunch of my scrunchies. So like literally the day before I saw this, I was like looking online for cheap scrunchies. And then I saw this and I was like, that's amazing. Here we go. You know, if you're doing them the same fabric too, if, oh, look there. I'm like a magician pulling a Yeah. Scrunchie. You can see the difference between the front and the back. What's that up your sleeve? <laughs> it's a scrunchie! <laughs> you, could do, you could do an extra long one if you're doing a bunch, Molly, like if you're doing for gifts. Mm -hmm. You could make like 44 inches or 66 inches, right? Wow. And then just cut it. Because oh. then you save all the stuff. Right? You could just lace it all the way through and then yeah. chop it. That's yeah. a good idea. Genius. 
Okay. All right, yeah. so now that you've, you've got this, yes. your tube. Alan, that looks so cool. Oh, thank you. I love the fabric. Excited. Yeah. You can't see it, but it's got like people with birds on their noses. Oh, that's the thing. <laughs> I think for something like Papayas. Maybe a little the moon. bigger so you can see better. Right, I think yeah. you're right. Okay, so now you're going to take your um, safety pin again. Mm -hmm. And um, so Tom, my friend was saying that you, maybe you could do this all in one step, the turning inside out in the elastic, but I don't know that it would work. Maybe if you had super long elastic, but so poke mm -hmm. the, um, we're just doing it as two steps today. Poke the elastic through the pin and you'll want to make sure to close the safety pin. Because if you have it open, it's going to catch on your fabric as you go. And then you're just gonna do the same thing. You're gonna lace it through. Just be careful because it's shorter than your fabric to make sure that you keep track of the, <laughs> the end, right? Because otherwise you'll have to fish it out. And again, when you make these thicker, all of this stuff is so much easier because you have, you know, your tube is just that much longer. Gotcha. Or thicker, I mean. And if you're, you know, if you want to kind of keep everything even, just try to keep your seam all, you know, in one place because it tends to twist around. Oh, my knot came undone. It turned on you. That's the nice thing about the office or vans too is the knots really hold because the material is like um, sticky. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Everything you've been told about not using them in your hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking. That's why I first grabbed like these ones, but yeah. you're right. It doesn't actually matter because. So yeah, the fabric really. There's, um, I did a knot in mine. So we're going to. Oh, they look so good. Look so so good. scrunchy. Oh, nice. So what you're going to do is once you've tied, and I'm not going to tie it all the way because Federica's are actually going to use this rubber band. You're going to take your rubber band and then tie it. I would do this kind of a knot. Can you see? Or you just tie it through. You could also do a square knot, but I think this would hold better. Yep. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. just pull it as tight as you can. And then trim off a little bit, but not too much because, again, it doesn't really matter and you want it to hold. And then you should be, you should have something like this. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate the slip stitch. It's a little hard to uh, explain. I looked online for explanations just so I could get the wording, and none of it really made sense. Are there any good YouTube videos? Um, there probably are. I didn't see any. Because slip stitching, when it's done right, is used for hems, and it's pretty much invisible, but mine sure are not. So, um, I don't know if you can see, I'll show you the yellow part right there. Do you see? Yeah. That's where I've slip stitched. I used a dark fabric. So on the blue part, you can't really see it, but that's what it looks like. And basically the concept is this. You're gonna want the folded end on top of the raw edge. So when you lace them through, like this is my finished edge. This is the edge that's gonna show right? I'm going to put my raw edge, see how there's loose threads, I'm going to put that inside. So it's, a, what is that, a succubus or whatever that, that creature is that eats its own tail? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what it's doing. You're putting the, the finished edge on top. And then what you're going to want to do I'll use this one as an example. You catch, I get better lapes. Is that better or is that worse? That's worse, it's dark. Okay. It's a little darker. You're gonna wanna catch one side, not all the way through the scrunchie, just one side and up as just as tiniest amount that you can of the other side and then pull it through and then do the same thing. Take the, the raw edge side and go up to the side right on the edge of the fold. You're trying to make teeny tiny little stitches as invisible as possible, if that makes sense. So you're, you're, you're merging the two sides together. 
And again, if you're using thread that's similar color to your fabric, no one's gonna, you know. Yeah, you're not gonna notice. Be you're not gonna be able to see it. I also but feel like scrunchies again are a great project. What's that? Well, it's again like the scrunchie is a great project to practice this stuff on. Exactly. And no you, can, you know, if you're more comfortable with the in and out stitching that we did before, you could do that on this. There's okay. no reason why you couldn't. This is just kind of nice because it finishes off the, the folded edge. Yeah, totally. So that's what a slip stitch is. I'm going to wait to you. All right. So easy. It's, it's really so easy. It's so easy. It looks like it's ready. Just open. Yeah, and so now you're going, yeah, exactly. So now you're going to take, we didn't fold this one edge, but what we'll do is we trim a little bit. Let's trim it. Just so you don't have all the extra stuff. And then you save those. And you yeah, just tie it really tight. Pull it really tight. Oh. Ah, ah. <laughs> Sorry, not that tight. <laughs> That's okay. It'll be all right. <laughs> Sorry. I love how big those ones are. We broke our rubber band. Here, do you want this one? Uh -oh. you can play it. Not, are you sure? I think I have more like this at home. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I was Maybe not, I was not clear. Scrunchy casualty. <laughs> exactly. Here, use this one. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. There you go. Well, I think I'm going to try with this little piece. I'm gonna cut well, it. also, like, if you're just gonna, like, you can wear a scrunchie over a hair tie, so it doesn't even have to be that, like, big, you know? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, just for decorative. Kind of just like a decorative little hat on top of your... I feel like that would take more organization than I usually have. Like, I usually feel like I'm throwing a scrunchie in my hair because I just want to get it out of my face. Yeah, exactly. But that can be also an accessory. That's know? true. It can be accessory. Especially when you see some of the ones on Instagram, Emma. I don't know if you Exactly. They're so freaking I love fancy. I have them, but I want to now. The organza ones or the velvet ones. My shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some very... Fancy. Also, like, I feel like you can buy them at, like, really trendy stores for, like, a lot of money, so it's cool to be able to just make them. For 19, from London, from UK, like, 19 pounds, which is maybe $23. My mom put in for silk ones that oh, were $100. Wow. Wow. Go for it. I know, right? Good. And that, like, if you had a silk shirt, you can make a bunch. Thank you for sharing these. I will make more. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So now, fold, we're doing pins. Fold this like this. And this one, the side, the raw edge. This we should have done before. I mm. forgot to help you with that. Let's just maybe skip this around. So you're going to put this inside. Inside. I forgot to say to pin, Emma. Oh. It's that, you know, before you slip stitch. I should have said that. How you sign that. I want to make sure that uh, yeah, this, uh, they're tight enough, you know. Sure, sure. Okay. So let's hold it on the Right, so it's a nice, yes. nice edge. And then you're going to want to um, make sure this part is the same on both side. sides, right? So yeah. to have a nice design, exactly. if I want to, I can choose. For example, this I like this. And maybe that side is a bit 
Yeah, sure. Oh, I'll bring it flower. Try to not get both sides. You know what I mean? Just one? Okay. Just one up and all the way around. All the way around. Yeah. yeah. But try not to go through the whole scrunchie. This is the scrunchiest one I've made, I think. Ooh, it looks really good. Great. It's amazing. I know this is a weird thing to say as a compliment, but it looks like a store-bought one, meaning it's like the same. <laughs> I mean, it's better than store-bought. It's homemade. Yeah, no, it definitely right. looks the best out of the ones I've made. Yeah, it looks like what you think of when you think of scrunchie. Let's see if it works. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's... Yeah, you know, there's something about scrunchies. They want to be like just part of your hair, not all of your hair, huh? Oh, that looks really nice. A little blue popping up. Yeah. It does look like a little hat. <laughs> that looks so good. You're rocking your scrunchie. 80s dance party, here I come. Yeah, you got to do this in your hair. <laughs> 